Well hello, I'm here on Dartmoor with Field McConnell who's uh, as usual come all the way from the United States uh, not only to visit England but to visit the UK Column uh, studio in Plymouth and uh, we've taken a bit of shelter behind the tree because it's a bit windy up here but welcome, welcome to England. Oh well thank you very much and thanks for hosting me Brian. That, that's fine. And uh, you've spent the morning in the uh, UK Column studio. You sat in on the news that we did at lunchtime. And you've heard us say that we, we nearly don't know what to say about what started to unfold in this country. So you've been in UK actually for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? What, what do you think about uh, what's, what's going on as far as politics and the, the state of this country? What do you see as an American here in England? Well, it seems to be a mirror of what's going on over in the United States. And today's sort of special because it's right in between D-Day, where Brits and Yanks and other allies uh, attacked France and Germany. Of course, the enemy was, was Germany, but they attacked France with 5,000 ships and untold thousands of men. And, you know, uh, what I learned in my public school education over in the United States is that the U.K. and the U.S., are uh, lifelong allies, and yet I see some infl some UK influence in the US that's not good, and I see some US influence in the UK that's not good, so I wanted to come over here and spend a couple of weeks with my wife, uh, Denise, and I wanted to be here uh, between D-Day and your election, because I have a fair amount of interest in what happens tomorrow in your public voting. Yeah, we're, we're in for an interesting time with uh, the election. Of course, we are saying we don't want Theresa May to get in because we think that she's going to create a dictatorship. And I'll just come back to what you've said. Yes, all those years ago, there were a lot of American troops in this area uh, because this, this was one of the biggest marshalling areas prior to the invasion uh, of Europe for D-Day. And American troops were stationed out in, in a lot of country areas uh, very close to where we are now. Uh, just behind us, about uh, half a mile away, was one of the original air bases that would have provided aircraft for air cover over France. But all those men and, and women were fighting and dying for freedom in Europe, freedom from Nazi tyranny. And yet what we see is the same sort of tyranny is emerging in the UK and, and America. We see that at the moment Theresa May is closing down this country into a police state. That's not what those people died for. No, it, it's not. My father was a POW in World War II. Now, he wasn't a POW in Germany. He was in Japan. But uh, nevertheless, I respect what my father did and soldiers and airmen and sailors on both sides of the conflict. I'm terribly troubled by the continual war that has... Uh, gripped the United States of America for way too long and I'm also troubled and uh, we'll see where it goes but I find these wars to have one thing in common and that is that they don't really address the national interest of any of the combatants but they address the uh, military industrial banking complex if you will and I think this was the plan going back to 1763 when a family named Bauer changed their name to Rothschild, and they would, uh, it's my understanding from my education, and I'll excuse myself if I'm wrong because I have a public school education, and on both sides of the Atlantic, those are controlled and have been for a long time. But uh, I don't think there's nationalistic uh, interest in war, and I look directly to my own country, the United States of America, where our military machine is called the Department of Defense. Well, if that's true, why aren't we around the perimeter of the United States defending ourselves? Why are we in 190 nations imposing our will if it's our will and it's not the American people will? But uh, collectively, it's the will of the Jesuit Order of the Vatican's, I believe, uh, the City of London bankers, I believe, and the Washington, D.C. Uh, area, which is sovereign. It's not part of the United States. It's sovereign territory, but nobody in the U.S. knows that because the education is watered down and uh, our populations on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, our populations are under attack by our own leaders. And that's why I think it's imperative that the leaders uh, that you have tomorrow night are not the leaders that are in power today. Uh, I believe that there have been a series of uh, psychopaths with narcissism or dementia uh, in 
in charge and the chain of command of nuclear weapons, and that's not good for humanity or any of the global commoners. Yeah. Um, isn't it interesting that um, you and I are, are of a certain vintage, the Cold War vintage, you, you were flying phantoms, I was at sea with a with the Navy, but I, I spent a lot of time working with the United States Navy. And what did I believe then? I believe that uh, we were in a very polarized war. We, uh, we, were, we saw, we were told that the Russians were a major threat and uh, they were going to invade Europe. Uh, we went through all of that. And here we are now where we're really looking at what we're being told by our respective governments. Do you believe that we live in a world at the moment where we have a group of people we're told are international terrorists who want to murder us all in our beds? Do you believe the narrative that, that, we're, that we are being told at the moment about uh, the um, Islamic, uh, the IS, Daesh, the uh, um, Islamic um, State? Do you actually believe this? No, I don't. But uh, I think a, a majority of your country may, and I think that a majority of my country does. But when the, when the United States became so powerful, and by the way, for your audience, which would be mostly European, I'm not nationalistic or jingoistic. I'm a global citizen, and I would love nothing, nothing more than global peace. But uh, we've been told about all these uh, paper enemies, and uh, it's, it all started in my belief, uh, as the U.S. military power was being shrunk in the late 80s, um, we needed to come up with some enemies that the United States military could be deployed against, and there simply were none because Russia didn't want to kill me. No, this is quite true. Russia has withdrawn. Russia was uh, in a bad state, so there was no enemy. And well, we can I address that? Because <laughs> I, in 1986, 87, 88, and 89, I was stationed at the Fargo Air National Guard base in North Dakota, and I was in a one-on-two -on conversation with a crew of a NASA-operated WB-57F, and uh, I asked them what they were doing in Fargo, North Dakota, and of course they couldn't tell me. Uh, and then I invited them down to our informal debriefing room, and I shared a couple of beverages with these people, and I tried them again, and they still couldn't tell me. But I said, you know, I believe you two fellows fly for the Texas Air National Guard, don't you? And they said, yes. And I said, and I think you fly F-4 Phantoms, don't you, as your weekend job when flying the NASA WB-57F was their weekday job. They said, yes, we do. And I said, then we're on the same team and we should communicate effectively. I said, I hope before you leave here at the end of a two-week deployment, you can tell me uh, what you're doing because I've already got a lot of it figured out already just from what you're flying. And it turns out, and I'm not saying they told me, but I did learn that uh, they were practicing technology which could uh, cause rain to fall wherever the rain clouds passed. For instance, if they flew into Montana and they wanted to have the rain fall in Montana instead of North Dakota, they could do that. Well, what they were practicing was getting the rain to fall before it got to Russia and the Ukraine, which, of course, then was one nation, USSR. And uh, Russia was faced with uh, the difficult choice of maintaining their military or feeding their citizens. And I think that's dirty pool, but I think anything that engenders peace is uh, good for all of humanity. And I have no more love for the average American than I have love and respect for the average Russian uh, Vietnamese, North Korean. I believe we have no enemies except the bankers and the, you ask about terrorists. Yeah. I think the terrorists are in our halls of government yeah. and these created terrorists like ISIS or Al-Nazra or whoever you want to call them, they may as well be, they may very well be uh, put in power by people, I'll just pick a name that pops into my head out of nowhere, John McCain. He may have a relationship with ISIS, does he or doesn't he? He knows well, how to find me if he wants to talk about it. Well, this is this is an interesting subject because uh, several uh, a couple of years ago we challenged a conservative MP called Brooks Newmark, uh, who said that he'd been on the uh, Syrian uh, Turkish-Syrian border uh, meeting people um, connected to Al Nusra. So we asked the question: What is this man doing meeting with these people now clearly identified as terrorists? Uh, but he didn't want to answer that question. Uh, he was saying, he was talking about the use of chemical weapons in Syria. We asked for the evidence of that. He couldn't provide it. He directed us to 
uh, UK reports from Port and Down, he talked about UN reports, he talked about US reports. None of those reports had the evidence that uh, Assad had used chemical weapons. So then we come to the qu question, uh, the possibility that our own governments are lying to us about very dark subjects, terrorism, war. And once we, we know our own governments are prepared to lie about these subjects, we can't trust them on anything. So uh, I'm also in the position now as, a, as an ex-military man saying, well, I'm beginning to look at the world and I see that it's my own government that is actually helping to foment the wars. But of course, they like to do this by blaming anybody they can. So at the moment, it's the Russians, blame the Russians for everything. Uh, but of course, it's blame anybody who, who's from a Middle Eastern country. It's blame uh, Iran, it's blame... Uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, it's always somebody else. But when I look at my own politicians, these are highly devious people. And I think the same situation is going on in America. What do we do about it? Well, I think we try to educate people and get people to stand up for their rights as, as uh, uh, individuals. And it doesn't matter if the individual has a Union Jack or a Japanese meatball or the Russian flag, red, white, and blue. We're all citizens, we're all in this together. If we continue to attack each other for money to make income for the evil people that control my country as well yeah. as yours, and I want to go on with, you know, vagueness is wonderful. Even politicians can be vague. I want to be real precise about a couple of things. Number one, weapons of mass destruction. Well, Fosgen was one of the alleged weapons of mass destruction when we went in and killed Saddam Hussein. Uh, interestingly enough, in my lifetime, Fosgene was released in the United States of America under the Obama administration, and it was released out of an aircraft that took off from Little Rock Air Force Base in Arizona and killed a whole bunch of uh, blackbirds, uh, red-winged blackbirds. They fell out of the sky in the tens of thousands, and all the biologists and all the uh, people that are interested in the uh, ecology, they wanted to know why these blackbirds were dying in record numbers. The answer was our own country was testing Fosgene being launched from aircraft operated by the U.S. Air Force. So I questioned my own country and the United States of America is a wonderful country as is the United Kingdom, but we don't have wonderful leaders. Uh, right now we're on a temporary break in the U.S. where we have someone that I believe wants to do the right thing. I think tomorrow you may go to bed with a leader that wants to do the right thing. But as far as Russian being our enemy, uh, I, I don't see that. I've so, some so are we, we're saying that the, the truth, getting the information out about what is really happening, is an important thing. Yes, I think so, and I need that. I think that we all need to. Uh, agree across borders or across the Atlantic Ocean, in the case of yourself and myself, uh, the enemies of the American people, the enemies of the uh, people in the United Kingdom, they're, they're not Russia, they're not Muslim terrorists. I've had personal uh, relationship with Russia regarding aviation safety events, three different aircraft cr uh, crashes that were lied about, uh, the most recent being on Christmas morning when a TU-154M took off from Sochi, destined for Syria. Uh, the other two being a October 31st flight of an Airbus A321 over Sinai, which by the way is Israeli controlled airspace in Egypt, I mean air traffic control airspace. And the third Russian aircraft that I got involved with personally uh, with Russia is the um, Sukhoi Superjet that was driven into Mount Salak in, in uh, Indonesia on the 9th of May of 2012. Uh, on the 11th of May of 2012, I sent a letter to the defense attache of Russia in Washington, D.C., and I said, if you think my information's worthy, please send it to VP. I didn't say who VP was, I think they know. Uh, 48 hours later, Russia's papers were saying that the technology that brought down the Sukhoi Superjet was U.S. technology, and they were 100% right. But it was not the U.S. that did that, and I'll stop with my opinion right there. Okay. Well, we've just had an informal chat uh, together on Dartmoor. It's getting a bit uh, cool. It's certainly a bit windy here, so I think we'll end there. Uh, Field, thank you very much for joining me. We'll now go and have a look at some of the local uh, features, including that uh, Second World War air base down the road. And when we do that, we're going to remember those men and women who actually fought for 
freedom and proper democracy. They died, they didn't die in vain. Uh, we all need to make sure that people really understand where the danger is and we're going to end by saying we think it's our own governments. Okay, bye-bye.